welcome to this interview from the front lines with Oli Zenhauser and welcome yourself, Oli. Hello, Kai. Nice to hear from you. Great. So the plan is for the viewer to gain new insights on Maria de Visor, or on how it's used and learn from you, Oli. We're former colleagues from way back when MySQL AB and the idea for the header from the front lines came from a chat that you and I had earlier this week. Uh, you had military analogies. Is that because you're Swiss? Well, I, I didn't get. I had military. Uh, well, you had a military uh, background, a military analogy for the uh, header from the front lines. That's very belligerent. Is that because every Swiss person has a gun in the in the cupboard? Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, so it's similar. I don't know. We we are in the in the front. We are we have direct contact with the customers. We we are fighting for or with the customer. It depends a little bit. Um, we try to help them to solve something. Yeah, seriously, I think uh, that that's a great analogy. So from Dual, for those in the amongst the viewers who don't know, is a consulting and training company in Switzerland and Germany and the, the other places. And, and that does give some merit to the analogy. So you see how MariaDB server is being used and received in the front line, so to speak. And we at MariaDB Foundation don't always get the, the, the same exposure from, uh, from uh, far away from the front line. Yeah, possibly that's correct. So we are dealing day to day with the customer. And if we see something with the customer, if we see a problem, then we try to give it back to you. We open the tickets that you can, can fix them. Right, and, and, and now this is, I mean, uh, opening tickets about bugs is one thing, but I think there's a lot of soft knowledge that we don't get, and that's the purpose of this, this interview. So you can give some, add some color to us and also to the viewers. So the purpose for us, for, for the MariaDB Foundation, is to learn from you uh, how to go out about our business. And our business at the MariaDB Foundation is, is adoption, openness and continuity. So, so we're a non, not-for-profit organization and our idea, our goal is to increase the adoption of MariaDB server. We want to bless the world through more usage of it. And um, uh, openness means uh, accepting and nurturing the valuable contributions from our user base. And we're sometimes getting myopic ourselves. So that's why we need to listen to people from the, the front line like you. Okay. So then, so now we want to, to uh, know what you see in these front lines. Uh, you sent a, a URL today about your training classes. It says uh, MariaDB and MySQL in the same class. So do they still fit into one class? Um, we are currently in the situation that the ecosystem splits, but I would say both ecosystems are not good big enough yet to, to separate them completely. So let's say 90 to 95% of the course or training material is still the same. And then in the training, I say, okay, this topic is for MariaDB and this is only for MySQL and this is for MariaDB. So it's still okay. Uh, we have seen a trend in the last four years that let's say four years ago, nobody knew about MariaDB zero. And in the last four years, uh, this has completely shifted to, let's say, 75% of, uh, of, of the users or the customers is requiring MariaDB and 25% is, is using MySQL. So there was a shift from zero to 75%. That's, of course, great news for us. Uh, <laughs> sure. uh, but I would want to understand why. Uh, so, so why do you think that is? Where do they, these people listen well, so it's actually two questions. One is, why have they shifted? Uh, and the second one is, how have, have they learned about us? But let's take the first one first. So, so why do you think that is? Okay, uh, there are probably several reasons. Uh, one reason is uh, we make posts and advertising that we are a MariaDB training facility. And I'm not really aware of anybody else doing that in German speaking Europe. So maybe there are some. So that means we attract people using MariaDB 
and maybe MySQL users are going to MySQL itself or to other companies which are more focused on MySQL only. So that means uh, the bubble I am living in is maybe not a 100% accurate picture of the whole ecosystem because we attract a part of the ecosystem. So right. that, 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 that's one reason. So, so one reason is, is that you are searching out the bubble that, that, that is more closer to Maria Nive, but do you see other reasons than that? Yeah, so we see a lot of customers, they are still having MySQL and want to move away. Uh, why are they doing that? Um, one thing is they don't trust the company Oracle, where MySQL belongs today. Uh, don't trust Oracle anymore. As Oracle has done in the past a lot of evil things to the customers, so they don't trust them. We have some customers, they have a complete no Oracle policy anymore. So they have to search for alternatives and the, the easiest alternative and the alternative, which is the, the loudest alternative in the market is, is MariaDB. So are you accusing us of being loud? Uh, it could be better, but um, let's say you do a better job than other competitive products in the MariaDB MySQL ecosystem. So, so I'm actually more worried that we're not loud enough, that we don't get out to the people that should know, know about us. So, so do you have any um, feeling for where these people have heard about us? How have they heard about MariaDB? And they actively searched based on wanting to go away from MySQL and just found it on the web or, or, or what's the, the information channel? That's a good question and I cannot really answer that. So um, probably one very important source of this move is, and this was already a big mistake MySQL has done, uh, is the distributions. Uh, the majority of our customers is installing the database via the distribution. And in the distributions, we had a huge shift in the last 10 years. So let's start with Red Hat. Red Hat was uh, distributing MySQL and they completely moved away to, to MariaDB. So you had to do a lot of extra effort on uh, Red Hat and CentOS to install MySQL. So that's one reason a lot of people shifted from MySQL to MariaDB. Now with the Red Hat 8, this has changed a little bit again, but that's another topic. Uh, with Debian, uh, maybe you know much better than me why Debian has decided uh, to abandon uh, MySQL and to go to completely to MariaDB. I've only heard rumors, so I don't want to spread rumors. Maybe you tell something about that. But Debian, uh, which is quite popular in Central Europe, uh, only provides per default MariaDB, you can change that, but you have to do, uh, you have to take special actions and Ubuntu does both. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, a reason the people choose primarily the, the, the database which comes with the distribution and that's um, in the majority of the cases to that today is my S uh, MariaDB. So, so maybe uh, one advice I have to, to MariaDB that is uh, you should really uh, take focus on the distributions. They are a good distribution channel let's talk like that for for a product so if they you are, are in the and, distribution that's horribly important they are and, and, and that's something that we truly are concentrating on as well uh, we try to do our best on it so that was going to be one of my questions out of the three d's uh, uh, distribute downloads distributions and docker where do you see people obtaining uh, maria db from and, and and you're saying it's very much the distributions but what about do they download it and do they use Docker as well? Do you get exposure to that? So that's the easy thing first. Docker is not really uh, common yet. And maybe Marco Tuz has written a nice blog article about containers and Docker and Kubernetes this week. So maybe it's worth reading it. Uh, so I, we don't see Docker or containers adoption. We don't see, the, see it at all. Right. Yes. What about now using using uh, downloading from MariaDB to Tor? Yes. So if you call uh, the MariaDB repository as well as downloading, then definitely that's the source number two. So we recommend the users always to take the repository from the software vendors directly because distributions are 
completely delivering completely old stuff. So they are delivering MariaDB 10.3. We are now at 10.6 and think about 10.7. So distributions are old. And that's the reason I say, hey, uh, go to the repositories of the software vendors. And they have all today very good repositories and use it from there, use the newest GA release from the repositories. And uh, in the trainings, we do it anyway like that. And we see also some customers doing it in this way. Mm -hmm. so, so you are basing your training on the more or less newest version. You were mentioning 10.6 now. Yes. So last training we had last week uh, that was running on 10.6. I say always take the newest one, uh, except some customer has some serious concern because of some other reasons, but that never happened. Yeah, so, so one of those concerns might be security. So you were saying, why, uh, why has the migration happened uh, from MySQL to MariaDB in, uh, in Debian? And lots of that was, was related to how openly uh, one is dealing with uh, security breaches and, and, and setting expectations. And, and, and that's also one of the key advantages of using a, a distribution. I mean, for our side, of course, it's very, we want to make it easy for people to use the latest versions by downloading them from MariaDB.org. But in all fairness, there's, there's value provided by the added security that, uh, that everybody knows that something uh, like, like uh, Debian is, is, is providing. Okay. So, uh, so then, because you, you, you stress these new releases, uh, what's, what's the attractive part of, of, of a new release? So is there any particular functionality of the latest versions? Uh, I mean, okay, 10.3 is not a particularly new one, but out of the new functionality, do you update the training materials or, or how do you benefit from the new, uh, using the newest version? Okay. So what we rarely to never see is that our customers are hunting for the hot new features. So they in 95 or more percent of the use cases are just using standard legacy stuff, which was already there in MariaDB 5.5 or something like that. So maybe one exception is now JSON stuff. We hear from time to time but I'm not aware of any new feature or let's say obvious new feature. Uh, but everything everybody thinks uh, is cool is the online uh, in place DDL commands because they are affected every day by that. But uh, what is in 10.7? Well, 10.7 7 is truly new, but like 10.6 10, 10, 10, uh, okay. features. So what are the, the cool new 10.6 features? I don't know it by heart. Do you have one or two, which is the most important? We have quite a lot of optimization features. Uh, and, and there's, I mean, we usually have a, a theme for one of, for each one of these, these releases. May, it may be security, it, it may be Oracle extensions and so on. So there's, there's a number of them. Okay. Um, uh, but this was mostly listening to you, your, your, yeah, yeah. your uh, impressions from the front line. Yeah. So they are not re really using the hot new stuff. So that's most of the cases, not an issue. Uh, for example, also the Oracle PLS call stuff, we don't really see that. So customers are not even aware of most of them. We see rarely customers moving from Oracle to MariaDB and asking for PLS call uh, stuff. We don't see that. Uh, optimization. Uh, when you are talking about the optimizer, yes, this is an issue, but uh, with the optimizer improvements, it's typically the case that if it helps you, you don't feel it. Mm -hmm. You only feel it if it doesn't help you. Or let's say like this, if a query becomes faster, nobody complains. But if a query becomes slower, everybody starts shouting. And with the newer optimizer, we have sometimes more troubles than with the older ones. You have to be aware of that the new optimizers in stand four, uh, let's say it's more tricky with the persistent statistics that maybe you have to do an analyze, which we never did before 10.4, never. And now we have to do it. 
some strange effects. You do a load from a dump from the slave to the master or from a test to a prod system. And on the slave, it was fast. And on the master, it took two minutes a query. On the slave, 100 milliseconds. And then you are thinking out, what could it be? And in the beginning, it was for me, it was, I have to change my habit uh, that I have to always to think, wait, optimize the statistics becomes an issue. Before you typically say, okay, it's not cached, it's maybe the IO system, maybe it's a different release. And now you have to add on top, hey, pay attention about the statistics. Do an analyze first, and then we discuss again. So this is a new feature, which helps, but it also hurts. And when it hurts, you feel it. Right, right. So um, looking at your classes, I mean, you, you as I understand your, your activities, it's, uh, you're offering, it's, it's uh, training and it's it's consulting. So looking at the training uh, part, the, the class attendees, uh, what what's a typical attendee? Is it a DBA or a developer or a DevOps or, or, or even a manager? Okay, managers we nearly never have. Uh, depending on the trainings we have, or most of our trainings are visited by administrators. And now what does, what does administrator mean? A classical DBA does not re, nearly not exist anymore. So what we typically have is a system administrator, which has also to deal with the databases. So classical mm -hmm. administrator, like 10, 15 years ago, you are a DBA and that's your profession rarely exists, owned in big companies. Uh, so the typical customer is a system administrator and that with the DevOps, that's a very interesting area because I have heard a lot about it. I maybe know a little bit theory about it, but so the implementation of DevOps, at least according to my understanding, I don't see really in reality that developers also should do operations or what is the meaning of DevOps? That is supposed to be the meaning, yes. Yes. A and crossover of those two, but, but you don't see those animals. Yeah, yeah. Dev developers don't want to do operations because that's dirty fingers and that's working in the night and uh, being confronted with a difficult unknown uh, situations and that's not what developers want to do. And the same is with the administrators. Administrators are administrators because they do not want soft want to do software development or are not good in and they want to make things running and not develop new stuff so i am not so sure if the defop concept which we are all talking about nowadays will last for the future I, maybe i'm wrong but we will see mm -hmm. so so um you say sysadmins i was going to ask of the developers, but you don't have too many of those. What what languages they use, Maria DB from, but perhaps then the sysadmins, what 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 other uh, what programming language and environments, development environments do they need to manage? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one step back to the trainings. We have also um, Maria DB developer trainings, and there we have more developers. But let's say twenty percent of our cost training um, participants are developers. So what are they using? Uh, majority is still a PHP. And then a few of them, they have Java and uh, maybe then Python and a few exotic like C++, something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. But the majority is still PHP, uh, Java. I think the Python guys, they go more to Postgres because the Python guys want to be the Java replacement and enterprise and Postgres wants to be Oracle replacement and enterprise and enterprise and enterprise fits together. So maybe we don't see too many Python people because of this. Perhaps that's a message to us that we should be talking more to this. I was actually last week giving a presentation, a Python and MariaDB, a match question mark in it in South Africa, so yeah. of course I didn't travel there, uh, but it was uh, it was uh, well received, I would say, and clearly Postgres was was uh, quite uh, quite present there in the questions on on, on the mm -hmm. Discord channel afterwards, and and uh, data science and Python obviously fit well well together. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't want to say it's a technical issue; it's more an issue in the mind. Postgres was always out 
we are enterprise and we are perfect and good and we do it the right and MariaDB, those are the guys uh, which, yeah, glue the stuff together and don't do it well. So that's what the Postgres people say. So we are the enterprise guys and they are also heading for uh, ERP systems. And mm -hmm. there are ERP systems for MariaDB. They, they work together, I know one of them, but it's not what's in the mind of people or we are uh, working currently with a federal uh, organization here in Switzerland and they completely shift the way, way from MariaDB Postgre to Postgres because uh, they say that's a real enterprise database and, and uh, Postgres will solve it. Uh, Okay, those are managers who decide this, but uh, we are, as technicians, we are just laughing and say, okay, let's see uh, in, in one year again to move it back or to fix it, because I know that also Postgres people have the same problems like we have, but that's in the mind of the managers and of the enterprise software developers that uh, Postgres is enterprise and MariaDB is cheap crap. So this, this mantra, we somehow have to change. And MariaDB and former MySQL, I think, is a little bit uh, in German, selber schuld. How do you say that in English? Uh, fault. It's their own fault, yes, because we always solve it in a cheap and crappy way to make it just work. And that gives you, after time, gives you this it just works mentality and spirit. And you see also a lot of uh, software which is this, developed this way. Well, it certainly comes from a background or pragmatic background of working as opposed yeah. to being feature-wise complete, but not working. Yeah. But I think that, that's an old cliche from uh, the, 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 the early days of uh, MySQL and, and Postgres uh, fighting I I each other. Whether old truth used to be that uh, Postgres had all the functionality uh, and uh, Maria and MySQL had none and uh, MySQL had all the stability and, and speed and Postgres had none. But of course, those, those old truths, then uh, uh, they, they approached each other. So, so that, that's no longer a good starting point. It's mostly a uh, set of prejudice. Yeah, sure. But it's a mantra and it's a story which is told. And the people believe in these stories. And so that's that, a good lesson for us to, to, to retell that story and in, in put the right frame onto that, uh, onto that story. So thanks for that advice. So I'm uh, thinking about, uh, since you were since describing a fairly conservative crowd here with, with PHP and, and, and using um, MariaDB of the, the distros and not, not necessarily wanting the latest version and not so many DevOps and, and not using so much Docker. But what about the cloud? I mean, the cloud is, must be mainstream these days. Uh, I hear it at least from the news and from everybody. Uh, if I look at my customers, it's nearly non-existent. Okay, there are a few exceptions. Uh, last year, I had a customer who was in the Google Cloud and did some proof of concepts there. Uh, this week, I was discussing with a, a customer who wants to use the, how is it called, uh, the Amazon... AWS. No, not the AWS, the other one. EC2. Sorry? EC2. No. Um, the S3 engine. No, no, no. This, this, uh, this database which claims to be MySQL and Postgres Aurora. compatible. Aurora. Aurora, yes, thanks. Uh, so they want to do a proof of concept with Aurora and we should help them. But then, yeah, we had some customer in India who wants to build something in a stretch data center, but that's their own um, own cloud. So we, we, we don't really see that with our customers. So our customers are 95% in Central Europe. So maybe that's one reason. I think uh, America, North America is much more clouds affine, uh, but uh, in Europe, I don't see it. I just hear it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, when you're when we're talking migration, you're mostly talking about migrating of MySQL, not migrating of 
well, you were actually mentioning Oracle not being that visible in that area and SQL Server. What about Microsoft SQL Server? Or do you see other migrations except from uh, MySQL to MariaDB? Okay, uh, it's mostly MySQL to MariaDB. Oracle, we have never seen a DB2, not SQL Server. We were not involved in the migration. We have heard people moving from SQL Server to, to MariaDB, but uh, I was asking why, and there was no good reason except costs. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I sometimes wondering, uh, moving away from Microsoft SQL Server on Windows to MariaDB on Windows, is that a good fit? But that's up to the customer to, de to decide that. Okay, it works, but maybe it's not I would say the other one is the dream team. So, okay. Uh, then we had a strange uh, migration a few years ago, which was from Ingress, I think, or some very strange database to MariaDB, that's it. Mm -hmm. So the majority of migrations we see is from MySQL to MariaDB. Rarely the other way around, this exists, but only rarely. And it's typically a management decision and not a technical decision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For example, we had last week a discussion with a customer. They now move away from MariaDB and the mayor's ma management said, uh, we, we are um, a stock market listed company and we only want to work with a stock market listed company. So that's Oracle, MySQL, MariaDB is not on the stock market. I cannot follow this uh, decision or this explanation, but if they dis that their management decided that way, then that's, yeah, it's fine for me. Okay. So um, I would want to move to a couple of uh, questions with uh, your advice to, to us. Um, so we, we covered a lot of technical questions. Now, um, our goal is to drive adoption. Uh, to grow the user base. What are we missing at the MariaDB Foundation? So I have the impression that working with the community was much better before the big split in 2010. And I think that the user base is uh, or are the best evangelists for you. So it's typically the users, that means the developers in first priority, the admins, which vote for MariaDB. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, as we see, uh, it's rarely the management. So we typically come to a customer via the technicians and not via the management. It happens, but very, very rarely. So the user base are, your evangelists, are you fanboys? And I, I think um, before there was better work with the community. You are doing this um, MariaDB server fest, yes. Uh, you're do doing things like there was a, you had a boot at the FOSTEM, at the FrostCon, at the Chemnitz Linux target, all these big events, which are not happening anymore at the moment. Uh, but you could be a little bit more present there. That's a good piece of advice. So th thanks for that. Now, you were mentioning uh, events that no longer happen. So one doesn't know what will happen in the post-pandemic world, uh, world and, and how post-pandemic it will be. So will there be hybrid events? Uh, so how would you like to meet with both with us and with your uh, colleagues and, 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 and the user base? What's your vision for how to meet in Shall we say, well, there's going to be one kind of FOSDEM, you never know what kind of a FOSDEM in uh, early, early February 2022. Uh, how do you see envision? Uh, how do you envision uh, events uh, now coming uh, up? Yeah, so the, the very best thing is would be if you could meet face to face. So having together a beer, eating a pizza or whatever, meeting on an event that's not happening anymore for the moment. But that that would be great for example. I love FOSTEM. And in the evening, the big pizza party, you have maybe also been there somewhere in a restaurant in Brussels. That's yeah. really cool. You can talk with the people. You can talk with the people on the event, but that doesn't happen. So you do the MariaDB Server Fest, which is, yeah, which is Finally. good. 
uh, I really loved it to, to talk with some people uh, on the Tulip chat. Uh, I also I like to, 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 to poke a little bit the people and to stress a little bit people because then you get good or honest answers. So I really like that. But unfortunately, this is, yeah, this virtual, but that's good. But the promotion of that, I was a little bit disappointed uh, at some of the server fest participants, it was, I don't know, please correct me, 50 or 20, 30 in some of the speeches, for example, on the speech of uh, Sergei Petrunia. I don't know, I, I would expect much more people because he's a, a genius on his, his topic. So everybody who's interested in ESCO query tuning should be there and listening for him. And so maybe, I, maybe that was not really aware uh, in the world, this server fest. So you need new channels to inform people. Or MariaDB blog, Planet MySQL was uh, great, and now they just completely destroyed it. And you did not manage yet Planet MariaDB to replace them completely. True, true. We have or, to do that. So, it, how, but uh, I, do you have channels for us to be present on where we do not understand to be present right now? Okay, so I can tell you where I am. I am on uh, Xing, which is for Ger German speaking Europe. There is a MySQL and a MariaDB channel. The same on LinkedIn, which is international. Uh, then I'm on Facebook. I'm not so much on uh, Instagram. And how's the other call? I forgot the name. And if you look there at the two communities, MySQL versus MariaDB, it's maybe 10 to 1, the, the participants. So uh, people have not yet realized that MariaDB is not the same anymore than MySQL and that you should also follow the MariaDB channel if you are talking about MariaDB, not only the MySQL channel. So a little bit more at, at advertisement that there is a MariaDB blog, there is a MariaDB planet, there are MariaDB forums, channels on all these social platforms. And that's one thing one should do. So maybe you are already doing it. The other That's thing. Always good, good pieces of advice. Uh, we should, I mean, those, uh, you, you touch sore points in our uh, conscience, uh, uh, but, but you also underline uh, the, the way that we should probably move ahead. So those are very good pieces of, of advice. Uh, so that was the, the advice around uh, adoption, uh, like making ourselves known. Um, what about the technical uh, side? So what do we need in order to do in order to improve upon the code base? So do you have uh, moments where you think, oh, how stupid can it be? How, why do they not fix this easy thing? Do you have uh, technical wishes? That's a difficult question, technical issues. So we are sometimes filing bug reports about things we see out there. Uh, for example, last week uh, we set up a Galera cluster and the customer did not, in the training, yes, and they did the typo in the configuration file. And then typically the server does not start anymore and it's writing in the error log, this and this variable, I don't know, but then it was crashing. Mm -hmm. So really with a stack trace and you see uh, improper error handling. So I understand that the developers say, okay, that's not an important bug. We don't fix it, but it looks ugly. So the customer were looking at that and there was a C++ developer. They say, no, that, that's impossible. They crash. And we had two of those crashes in a, a three-day training. So that's, which leads to the the feeling of the people, oh, this software is not really stable yet or properly developed, I don't know. Maybe technically it doesn't matter if at the error handling, after the error handling, the server crashes, but it looks ugly. Uh, then we, ha we had uh, some time ago a uh, situation very, very uh, uh, ugly with uh, MariaDB 10.4 upgrading a cluster. On Friday, the customer did an upgrade, Friday afternoon, uh, because not so much traffic anymore, upgrade worked fine. Uh, on Saturday, Sunday, not a lot of traffic during the weekend. And then on Monday, the, uh, the traffic started. And then the cluster more or less exploded. 
and they did not know what to do. And then finally, they somehow rescued themselves by just running on one Galera node during the day to just keep business up. So luckily, they did not have so much load that they could not manage it with one Galera node. Mm -hmm. But if they would be doomed, they would be offline for the whole day. And then in the evening, they did the downgrade again. And that are things which is really, really nasty for the customers. And they were so somewhat of disappointed and afraid of the product. And so this error handling was going to be one area um, that I was going to probe uh, with you because it, it's sort of a favorite uh, pet peeve, as the Americans say from my side, with error messages that are uh, stupid or sort of, they are literally correct, but but they don't hint at all at what the real error is. And, and a somewhat more careful uh, checking or asserting would, would alert people and say, hey, you have a spelling error in your, in your yeah. configuration file. So you highlighted one such issue. If you have more of those, by all means, tell them to us because, because they, they are usually off, uh, off also not that hard to fix once you know that they really are pain points and, and one yeah. could see the pain from your customers reflected even in your eyes uh, here when you described yeah. it. That would be really, really great, but that's not MariaDB only issue. That's an issue with developers in general. I think they hate writing proper error message and proper error handling. Uh, we also have some software and we have the rule in the company, every error exit in all the code we have must, be, uh, must have a unit error code number. So if you come with the error code number 4242, I can tell you exactly in the code, where did you do an exit? And typically, if you do an error code handling, you, you do a, if this equals or not equals this, then exit uh, terminate. So mm -hmm. in the error message, you can easily write, I have compared this value and the content about that with that variable and the content about that, and it did not fix exit code 4242 terminate. And that helps, I would say in 75% of the cases already helps the power user to fix the issue itself without opening a ticket. True, that, that, yes. that, those are wise words. So I would, uh, I have to illustrate with a war story from my side, which is about uh, Python error messages. So this was pre-Python 3, it, it, it gets fixed with UTF-8. So my last name, uh, if you take the fir first four characters out of my last name, you will get an A, an R, an N, and half of an O, half of an E. And, yeah. and, and the concept of having half a letter, it doesn't really uh, click in my head. So I was never even thinking about those, those things. I was uh, cutting strings at a fixed point and, and got, got errors uh, at random points, which did not say, uh, uh, I did not hint at all at what the, the real uh, output was. Yes, yes. Yep. And I can imagine that we do similar things with, with MariaDB. So more care towards the, the, the error messages is what, what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, and just also with the error code, if I know uh, the 4242 error code is unique, I can do a grab on the source and I cannot change MariaDB code. I'm not, not good enough for this, but if I can look at the code, I s at least understand why it failed. If the error message is bad, I can at least look at the code and then try to understand why it failed and fix it. And you might be able to give a better error report to us yeah. so that we can fix okay. it. Yes. it uh, Definitely. Yeah. That's a good, really, really good point. Uh, what have I forgotten to, to ask you about that you wish to, to tell the viewers? Optimizer we were talking about. Oh, documentation. So um, MariaDB documentation is quite good. I like it. Like everything, it could be more perfect, but it's quite good. So maybe we should talk a little bit about documentation process or I don't know. Sure. So uh, how do we file documentation bugs or missing stuff? I have uh, opened the documentation bug last, for last week about there is something missing. Uh, I don't understand from everything in the documentation how this exactly works. 
how do I deal with that? So the, the way to deal with it is, is to leave a comment on the corresponding page and, and, and we should deal with, we shall deal with it in due course. But, but of course that due course might take, take a while. Uh, you, you being a person that, that, that comes to, to force them, uh, you might uh, know Ian Gilfillan in person. So you might ping him if there's something where, where you, you feel that there's a specific need to fix stuff and where your insight uh, can, can, where you can give more, more insight to the matters. That's one way for you to, to, to approach us. But basically, commenting on the pages uh, of the knowledge base is the way to go. We see a lot of, uh, first of all, people don't read the comments when they have a problem above, they don't read the comments below. That's one thing. If I read sometimes... Uh, the purpose for the comment is for us to fix the text yeah. above. That, 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 that is the logic. Of course, that, that uh, takes its time. Okay. Uh, the second thing is I see a lot of comments which are quite old, which are still there. So that uh, is not really trustworthy for me to comment there. So then I go maybe the way uh, write an email to Ian directly. Right. So depends how you want to have it. Yeah, we'll take up that discussion with, with Ian uh, how, how we should how we should set expectations on it. But I'm happy that you found our uh, documentation mostly good. Anything else on the documentation that, that we should take away? Except that it is not 100% complete, what it never will be now that that's okay. I would say it's okay. What sometimes is disturbing, but maybe you cannot or you do not want to solve it always. If I Google for something, MariaDB this and this, I end up with the enterprise documentation, which is crap, and then further down with the community documentation, which is good. So I first click on the crappy documentation and then somehow I find, okay, that's the wrong one. So I go to the second one. So maybe a search engine optimization, or I don't know how, do you, how, how one can solve this would help. Mm -hmm. so the better documentation first. Good to know, good to know. So I think this uh, should uh, conclude our, our story from the front lines with uh, Oli Senhauser. So thank you, Oli, for great insights. We will try to, to implement your thoughts and learn from what you told us. Thank you, Oli. Thank you, Kai, that I got the chance to, to tell something. And let's see what happens with it. Very good. Thank you.